Popeye the Sailor was a cartoon that came out originally in the 1930s, and you've probably seen him in different cartoons, memes, online videos, or whatever, but he was really known for eating spinach and becoming ridiculously stronger as a result of it. Now, people today still laugh at that because it was a funny show, it was a funny cartoon, and it sometimes helps kids eat their spinach, but obviously because spinach could never do something like that, it's a joke. Or is it? A very recent clinical study was actually done looking at spinach's effects on muscle development and strength. Who knows, maybe besides bettering your health in normal ways, like with eye and heart health, maybe spinach can impact physical strength in some way too. Today's study was the first of its kind looking at spinach in this context. And who knows, maybe it could be real. I talk about this study and more, so let's get into the video. What's up everyone, my name is Henrik and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing on a clinical trial studying the effects of spinach consumption and resistance training for over 12 weeks on skeletal muscle fitness and strength in older adults. This was published in December of 2021 by Silvia Perez Pinheiro and many others from the University of Católica San Antonio in Murcia, Spain. Spinach is known to be a superfood and can be consumed in a lot of different ways, from being cooked in a stir fry, eaten raw in a salad, or even blended into a smoothie. We know it has lots of various benefits for various aspects of health, and I'll go over that in a little bit more detail, but why would a study even look at its effects and strength? I mean, spinach has a lot of various compounds within, so maybe it's one of those few compounds within that's key to muscle strength. Maybe it's a combination of everything, and maybe spinach itself is just an anabolic compound. One of the motivations was not popped by the sale. I know that much. But today's study is the first looking at extended spinach consumption and anything else muscle related. So let's get into the video. But before that, I wanna give you a quick moment to hit that like and subscribe button. It really supports the channel and helps it grow and gives more people valuable information about clinical research out there on YouTube. Looking to the study design, this was a double-blinded, placebo-controlled clinical trial looking at the effects of daily spinach consumption in combination with resistance training. 45 individuals, 8 men, 37 women with an average age of 59 were enrolled and fully completed the trial. Participants primarily couldn't have any chronic diseases that could interfere with training, or they couldn't have taken other, any functional food or supplements that could have affected body composition within 6 months of starting the trial to get rid of those variables. The 45 participants were randomly split up into two groups, the experimental group that ate spinach and resistance training, or the control group that consumed placebo and still did resistance training. Both groups took four tablets total daily, two at breakfast and two at lunch over a period of 12 weeks. The experimental spinach group had 500 milligrams of spinach extract in each of their pills, so they consumed 2,000 milligrams of spinach extract daily. From my understanding, that's about two, three times the normal serving size of spinach, so relatively normal, not crazy here. The placebo group simply consumed an identically looking, tasting pill called the placebo pill, it's a sugar pill, and so that's why it's placebo controlled. None of the researchers nor the participants knew who was in what group, and that gets rid of any subconscious bias. It makes it a stronger study in general. Besides doing this, participants were, not, were told to not make any significant changes in their diet. The researchers measured macro, macromolecules consumed and calories consumed with a diet recall for about three days before each of the two study visits. Now, the resistance training was standardized and very basic compared to the, some of the studies I've seen previously. There were three training sessions a week for one hour each done every other day. It was the same thing every single time. There was a barbell back squat, leg extension, lat pull down, and chest press, all three sets for 10 reps combined with some stretches and five minutes of stationary bike each time. It's also important to note that these participants' ages ranged from 50 to 75, so you can't expect anything crazy with the exercises they were doing or the weights they were doing. Also, to make sure everything was even more standardized, all training sessions were supervised by some qualified sport training monitor so everything could run more smoothly. All the variables in the study were measured before and after 12 weeks. Basic body composition measures were measured, looking at total weight, fat, lean, and pure muscle mass along with blood pressure. A health-related quality of life survey was also done to measure things like self-reported health, like physical pain, energy or fatigue, social functioning, and mental health. An additional basic blood draw looking at liver enzymes and other biomarkers that could identify kidney-related issues were also measured just to make sure nothing was crazy with eating a bunch of spinach. And I'll break it to you now, all the lab tests were normal and everyone ended up with having labs within the normal ranges. Surprise, surprise, spinach is not bad for you. Now, the main thing being looked at, also called the primary outcome, which is how you describe these things in clinical trials, was the muscle force and function, basically looking at strength with the leg extension. I can pull up a video of what that looks like right here. It's just basically you're using your legs to push up against something and you're moving weight. Specifically, things like peak torque, total work, and average power 
were measured with isokinetic scenarios, meaning the leg extension, that thing you push up on, was moving at a constant speed between 0 and 90 degrees. Next, peak torque was measured for an isometric scenario. In an isometric measurement, now the leg extension thing that you're supposed to push up on isn't moving, and you're basically pushing as hard as you can on it, and then research can measure how much force or torque you're applying to that thing. Basically, the harder you push, the stronger, more muscle strength you have. Researchers also measured hand grip strength, which is studied by having participants squeeze onto a hand grip thing, like some, squeeze onto something, and then researchers can measure how hard they're squeezing onto that thing. In short, researchers effectively measured the strength of the legs and the forearms, or the hand, hand strength, and were trying to see how spinach, eating spinach, affected those variables. Looking at the first major group of results with respect to body composition and body weight, both groups lost fat and gained lean mass and muscle mass relative to baseline, but not relative to each other. I mean, this sort of makes sense. Exercising over three months, especially for those who don't typically exercise, can naturally cause these changes early on and after you've trained for a while too. It also makes sense. The macromolecule breakdown and calories consumed were not significantly different between groups. So it's hard to think that one group would have lost more fat or gained more muscle than the other. Now, interestingly, when breaking it down by gender, men in the spinach group actually saw significant increases in muscle mass relative to the control group, but not with women and not when looking at men and women as a whole. So you could say spinach in combination with resistance training caused more muscle mass growth when compared to just resistance training without spinach. Now, let's be honest, there were only eight guys in the trial, which is a tiny sample size and makes it very, very difficult to generalize to the total population. It's a massive limitation. If there was a larger sample size, maybe there could be no significant difference. Or maybe if there were more women in the trial, then we could have seen a significant difference there too. This is really why statistical power and sample sizes matter. In regards to the quality of life questionnaire, both groups equally felt that they were less limited in daily activities with respect to physical and emotional factors. So this is a great result, but spinach didn't cause a significant change here. Only primarily the resistance training did, since it was equally seen in both groups. This is another great argument for why you should do resistance training. But... When looking at the strength-related changes, the primary outcome here, both groups saw significant changes relative to baseline, which makes sense because lifting weights should naturally cause you to become stronger. But interestingly, when comparing the spinach group to the placebo group, the spinach group saw a significantly greater change in some of these strength measurements relative to placebo, specifically looking at peak torque only in the hand, only in the legs, not hands. So spinach could have really caused the spinach group become more stronger when combined with resistance training as opposed to only doing resistance training with no spinach. Okay, so in short, spinach causes a significant increase in strength for at least a few of those measurements, specifically looking at peak torque. Torque is basically a force applied over a distance and people in the spinach group could apply more force since distance was constant. Now this is sort of cool, especially since this is the first study to look at extended spinach supplementation with nearly any outcome, nevertheless strength and muscle changes. Spinach is one of those stereotypical foods that kids don't like to eat, primarily because it's green or it's a vegetable, but parents strongly encourage you to eat it because it's healthy for you, right? Now, all you have to do is tell your kids that eating spinach will get you gains and then consider that motivation. I'm only partially kidding at this point, but besides these interesting strength gains, spinach has obviously obvious health benefits that you've probably colloquially heard about. But what does research say about these benefits? A clinical trial from 2015 found that eating spinach significantly reduced oxidative stress markers and muscle damage after a half marathon, suggesting that it could have antioxidative effects, which is a great thing for your immune system. Lutein, which is a carotenoid, is found in lots of leafy greens and mostly common found in spinach. A March 2021 in vitro study found that lutein caused a reduction in the risk of breast cancer by inducing apoptosis or programmed cell death. Another in vitro study from 2018 found the same thing, but with lung cancer. Seems like spinach could be anti-cancerous, although there really hasn't been specifically clinical research done on it, like with human trials looking at spinach and cancer. An excellent review from August of 2021 discussed lutein with in vitro and in vivo studies and tied it to lots of positive benefits, like neuroprotective benefits in the brain, advancing eye health and delaying or preventing eye diseases, immune benefits like antiviral and antibacterial effects, strengthening your skin against UV light and other related issues, and benefits with preventing bone degradation and osteoporosis. Okay, great. It seems like spinach and lutein is matching up with our expectations of what of healthy vegetables, right? But looking back at today's trial, what about spinach can cause strength gains? I mean, antioxidants don't really do this, so what does? 
While spinach is home to this class of compounds called ectosteroids, which are basically anabolic muscle building compounds that naturally bind to estrogen receptors. Different companies online sell pure ecdysterone as a fitness supplement, and there doesn't seem to be problematic side effects associated with it as far as I know and as far as what research says right now. Although this is a very understudied and very overhyped compound, this could be one of the reasons why spinach could cause some strength gains. A clinical trial from 2019 found that ecdysterone caused significant increases in muscle mass in men, and the researchers actually recommended that ecdysterone become banned in sports and to be titled as an androgenic anabolic agent. Now, the results are not as clear-cut, though. Two in vivo studies here don't show any significant changes in mice in regards to muscle strength, and neither does a clinical trial from 2006. I could definitely take some time to go over these papers individually, but in short, ecdysterone theoretically has the potential to be a strong anabolic compound, but the research really isn't clear yet. One of the motivations for today's trial by the researchers that they stated was that ecdysterone is naturally found in spinach, and this could cause some anabolic effects in combination with the other naturally occurring compounds found in spinach. The researchers analyzed the spinach that they actually used in this trial and specifically found that the subjects were taking approximately 32 milligrams of ecdysterone daily, which is definitely a small amount, but significant enough to cause some anabolic effect. The clinical trial from 2019 showed that showed significant changes actually used an ectosterone dose from between 24 to 48 milligrams daily. So this could be a reason why spinach could be anabolic. Besides ectosterone, spinach is very rich in nitrates, which is primarily important for getting proper oxygen flow and delivery to your, through your bloodstream and specifically to your muscles. More oxygen delivery can mean better recovery, or in some cases, short-term stamina throughout an exercise. More oxygen available means more glucose can be efficiently broken down into energy, which is why nitrates in spinach could be an important factor. A clinical trial from 2019 showed increases in nitrate intake were associated with stronger hand grip strength and faster times through some aerobic measures, indicating that it could have some benefit with supplementation. Nitrates in combination with ectosterone found in spinach could be the reasons why we see significant increases in muscle mass in men and increases in strength in general when used in combination with resistance training. It's really cool that spinach can do this in addition to the fact that it's already healthy. But it's still important to remember the key limitations of today's study, being a very, very small sample size with only eight men. A lot of different aspects of a lifestyle can affect muscle development, like sleep, other nutrition, workout intensity, genetics, mental health, and lots of other stuff. And so when looking at a smaller sample, a lot of these variables can stand out more. So it's really hard to make a definitive claim of spinach even being remotely anabolic in the general population, but we can say it could have some positive effect. Additionally, today's trial was looking at people in their 50s and 60s. So we absolutely cannot assume that we would see the same outcomes in younger people, people in their teens, 20s, 30s. It could happen, but we can't make that assumption. Regardless, it's a great study on spinach's potential effects on muscle development, and I'm really excited to see the future research on it. Looking at a nice summary with some takeaways, a 2021 clinical trial found that consuming spinach in combination with resistance training over 12 weeks led to increases in measures of leg strength and some significant increases in muscle mass in men specifically. We know that spinach itself and many other leafy greens are very healthy and can prevent cancer, help with heart health, help your immune system, skin, and possibly delay the onset of age-related eye diseases. But today's study is the first to look at skeletal muscle strength, and it shows that it increases strength relative to placebo. Now we know that ecdysterone, a sort of anabolic hormone, is naturally in spinach, and in this combination with nitrates, with high nitrate levels, could explain why there is some change. Now I will qualify these claims. The strength increases were significant, but they were minimal. And the sample size is very small, um, so it's more vulnerable to outside side effects and outside variables. But it was a great exploratory study suggesting the start for more spinach-related research and this possible effect. I mean, from my understanding, spinach really doesn't have any side effects, and it's only been shown to be great for you and your general health. And it's basically a superfood. I know some people also don't like the taste. And I mean, you can choose to eat it or not, and you could be see some benefit. But in the least, now you know that superfoods like spinach can do something like this. And maybe now you know that spinach actually has an anabolic hormone found within it. I also do think it's funny that in the much older cartoon Popeye who ate the spinach and got really strong, I really doubt the original creators actually thought that actual spinach could do anything remotely to what they depicted as Popeye doing. And I mean, technically it can't do it to that level by any means, I'm not making that claim, but who knows, maybe there is something that spinach actually does to your strength. And that's just interesting to know. But regardless, that's all I had for today. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel and check out more content. 
I hope you all learned something and have a good one.